Sexy Beal Podcast. I'm Dan Frigolette. I'm here with Grant Ducati. Thank you for being here. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm gonna. All right. Uh, first distraction. Um, I've never asked anybody, anybody really how they do it. What, how did you get the name? How did you come up with the name? I um. So I had gone by Lucas Cash before. Uh, Cash is a too. family name, and I loved that name. That was such a good name. And uh, unfortunately, it's a family name, and I live in the South. And so the family was like, yeah, you got to change that. That's not uh, going to work. So your family knows. You're out to your family. Everybody knows what's going on. So my parents and my aunt. Great. Two aunts. Who, who does, who's in the dark? Uh, grandparents, just the old parts of the Southern family that would uh, explode if they found out. Yeah. I think they would combust. Yeah. <laughs> It would, would it, they would go in, not out. It would just be a mess. <laughs> they, would, they would, they would, they would more raisin, or they would explode, explode out. I, um, yeah, I, I, even doing comedy was like challenging for like my grandma, and really? I wasn't like I'm not like the dirtiest act. So to yeah, to have to like tell my grandmother that I was doing porn would have not been an easy journey. Yeah, at least um, brag about yourself for like thirty seconds. Well, so I was going to say with the name, um, I had known Trenton at the time. And so um, I think I, he was the first one I reached out to. And I was like, oh, shit. I hadn't had my first Naked Sword phone come out yet. And I said, like, oh, shit, I need to do something about this. And so he offered me his last name and it just all went from there. So, yeah. Yeah. Good enough. Um, yeah. Sorry, do the, sorry, do the brag about yourself for 30 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> brag about myself. Ooh. I hate that. I know it's <laughs> awful. Um, how do I be nice about this? No, no, be arrogant for a second. <laughs> I um, pa it's, this is your past to be arrogant for a second. You know, I I think I'm one of the youngest people in the industry that's gotten you know that is in as far as I am as far as being you know knowing the people that I do, um, having the opportunities that I've had. Um, I don't think it's been offered to a lot of people my age. So definitely proud of that. Okay. Um, oh God. <laughs> I did have a fully like built out career owned businesses before I started doing porn too. Yeah. And I gave a lot of that up to do porn. So by 22, I was pretty well established in a career. And then just said, you know, screw it, go into something else. Yeah. So uh, screw it. I'm going to go screw it. What's, um, yeah. what is, what, what, um, what like job functions from other, from other industries have you found super useful in your career now that were unexpected? Maybe marketing for okay. sure. Sure. Um, that's something that's come up in the industry significantly, uh, in the past few years, it's just people having to know how to market themselves. Um, so if I could go back now to school and I might, um, it would definitely be social media marketing. Okay. Just any kind of marketing major. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wait, how, so how old are you? I'm 23 now as of last week. Nice. Happy birthday. Thank you. Very good. So, um, so that's, so you said that's, that's young for the thing. Are you, what categories do, do you find people are, um, putting you in and then maybe what are some like tags that you wouldn't have thought that people would have, would have put you in. Oof. Like, um, like, like weird search history stuff. So I obviously get twink a lot. Okay. That's one that I was always kind of like insecure about because I wanted to be, you know, like the big guy on. Well, explain on that too. So, so I, I want to say that like a good portion of 185 episodes were just a uh, straight guy interviewing straight girl. And so I am on the, the learning curve of trying to figure out how to be the wokest, know all the things. And I imagine that there are people that are listening that are less knowledgeable than me. And I want them to, to, to be interested and understand. So t run us through the, 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 the 101 of Twink. Oh gosh. So Twink as I've understood it is just you know, a younger guy that still looks like he might be under 18. Right. I think that's really it. <laughs> so, but it's, that's the but, gist it, of it. but it's not necessarily, um, so it's like prepubescent is the idea. Kinda, yeah. 
like just uh, barely jail, legal. Jail bait. Jail bait. Yeah, right. <laughs> barely legal. Wait, um, by the way, so you said you're from the South. Where'd you grow up? Birmingham, Alabama. Where is the what's the what's the age of consent in Birmingham, Alabama? Who in the state? Oh God. It's actually Al- sixteen. Uh, yeah, Alabama's one of the low ones, right? Yeah. Virginia, I think, is 14, so they've got us beat. Is that right? Yeah. But that's, uh that's a far drive to uh just just to fuck somebody for uh two years younger. That's a I mean, that's I guess people do it. <laughs> Virginia 14. Holy crap. Wait, why do you know that? Um, you know, I had some misadventures with some older men no before kidding. I was 18. No shit. And so I needed to figure out, you know, to what extent am I breaking the law? <laughs> you wanted to not be, you wanted to not, well, first of all, I don't think, they're not prosecuting the young person. They, so you wanted to make sure that if you went somewhere and you were young, that the person hooking up with you would not be committing a crime, which is very courteous, by the way. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, so I was dating the guy too. Okay. And so, so how old I was think- he? You're 14 or you're you're how old i was um oh gosh i was hooking up with people off grinder at 15 right for sure because i didn't have my car yet i remember that so people were picking me up from my front yard super late at night what, um, what how did you get away with this what were you telling your parents oh i just climbed out the window nobody knows it happened no yeah. no 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 amazing no still no one knows you're the first one <laughs> And them. <laughs> uh, yeah, they know. So, okay. so you would literally, so I, that's so weird. So I'm, I'm a bit older. So my, the idea that like, I could have been trying to figure out my virginity and then just have an app blows my mm-hmm. mind. Right. Yeah. I was even just like, I saw a meme today about like map quest where we were printing out directions. When I was 16, we were printing out directions, holding them in our hand. And if you dropped them, you crash your car. Like that was like life. <laughs> um, so just to have that tool, have grinder at 14, 15, 16. Mm-hmm. It's not fair. I'm like, I'm like jealous. And I feel like you, I feel like you cheated life. That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it led to my, um, my pretty quick, you know, I don't want to say descent, but trip into sexuality that led to porn at such a young age. So sure. yeah, I don't hate it. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So wait, but run me through that whole thing. So you were dating. So how old were these men when you were at this 15 age? Oh God. I try to forget that. Um, sure, sure but we're interested. <laughs> okay. So I guess the one that I did actually look that up for, he was 22. That's so funny. And that's, that's, that's not that big of a, that's not that big of a difference. No, it's not it awful. like me trying to like, like get with a 15 year old. So the second one lied to me about his age. Sure. That's what, that's what you do. If you're trying to fuck someone too young for you, you lie about your age. It's the, well, one. but even the age he gave me was a little too old. Um, right. So yeah. how old did he say he was? I want to say, cause he was between my mom and dad. I want to say he was 48. Right. At the time that's, he said he was 48. That's what he said. And then you saw him and you were like, these pictures feel like they're, 10 years old. Oh, he looked good. Okay, okay. Cool. He was a six foot four or five, just roided out dude. Yeah. And he looked good, but I think he took off maybe 10 to 15 years from his age. Yeah, you think he was 60? Oh yeah, that's what I'm told yeah. by other people who have just known him around Birmingham. I see. For that so, long, yeah. So when you, when, you grow up, when you grow up in a small town like that, um. And it's the South, even though it's like we're at a progressive period of time, right? It's there is there's there's a lot of no nos to being gay in that community, I imagine. Yeah. And so what happens? So there's so you end up in, I don't know what do you you end up involved and out. And so. Everybody kind of knows everybody else. Is that is that how small the scene was that like they're like, oh, yeah, dude, dude's like clearly 70. So I think that there is, it's a smaller gay community than, you know, obviously bigger cities, but I think that just like much bigger cities, I still see a lot of people every time I go out that I don't know. For sure. 
So it's at least that big, but you know, a lot more people know each other because of that. Right, right, um, right. Birmingham, you know, it's definitely a, a liberal bubble in the middle of okay. a very conservative sure. state. It's like a, it's and, like one of the artsy towns. Yeah. So anyone that wants to still live close to family, but you know, out of rural Alabama, they move to Birmingham. Got it. And so we have, you know, some of the top medical research universities in Birmingham, at UAB. Um, we were the top or one of the top cities for actually HIV and AIDS research no um, back in the, you know, back in the 80s and 90s. Yeah. Um, so it's a very progressive city. It's a very, compared to the surrounding area, very easy place to come out versus no kidding. the surrounding area. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Alabama yeah. was also, I think my, my intro to Alabama was all the NASA stuff, right? And then there's the, there's the munitions yeah, company as well. Yeah. So you got Huntsville and Huntsville felt like a progressive place as well. Um, artsy place. Yeah. You could, you I, don't, could, you, I could be wrong. I love it. I could well, be wrong. It's, <laughs> I, I think it's sub par to Birmingham, but it's a nice place. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Wait, so, okay. Yeah. So Birmingham's, a, would you say Birmingham is the biggest progressivist? Uh, that's not that's a word, but um, is that, is it the most like woke part of Alabama, Birmingham? Absolutely. Yeah. And then who's two? Two. Oh, see, that's kind of tricky. So we were, you know, Birmingham especially was the center of the Black Civil Rights Movement back right. in the 60s. And so coming from that, you know, we're extremely progressive right. um, and very mindful of our history um, from that. So it's hard to say between like Selma and sure. Huntsville. Yeah. I would say Huntsville is the most advanced as far as, you know, uh, the business and the everything that they bring in. Right. But um, we obviously have, you know, other sites that have to do with civil rights movements that um, would also be in that list. Got it. Yeah. Um, so being in this, so what, a, what an interesting experience being in the South, being 15, having grinder, being able to do that. Um, oh yeah. That like that, like awakening. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting. Cause when I'm, you know, as, as a, as a dumb cis straight boy, um, I like, I don't, I don't have enough information a lot of times about, um, just what it would be like to have somebody like tell you that you like what you're into is like wrong. And so, a lot of a lot of the people that I've interviewed uh, this month like lived most of their lives in like shroud or quiet or like so for you to like be out so early at least to yourself um, is is pretty atypical from what I understand. Do you find yeah. that you were somebody who understood your sexuality sooner and and felt more accepted sooner than a lot of people that you've uh, encountered in your life? Um, I think so. It's surprising, you know, the change that happened. I think it started really, um, you know, around the beginning of the Obama presidency. Um, things just started getting a lot easier for us. Yeah. And so it was fairly easy for me to come out at 15. I had some issues with people at school. Um, and people, like younger than me are coming out so much sooner than me with such like more concrete identities and, you know, descriptions sure. of these identities than I could have ever done, you know, back then. Um, and they're so much more confident in who they are. And so yeah. that's even shocking for me being 23 and, you know, meeting a, a 18 year old that, you know, is light years ahead of where I was at that age. Right. I hate a young kid with confidence. It stresses me out. <laughs> <laughs> so that's um. So so that, yeah. That I don't know. That's a that's. So you said uh, during the Obama presidency, it kind of cl uh, cleaned things up. Do you think? Um, so then, is it fair to say Obama is the gayest president we've had? <laughs> well, there's the meme of um. Is it? I I want to say it's Eisenhower, where he's just sitting all prim and proper, and it's right. like. 
there's a meme going around with uh, a picture of him right now where it's like, um, she might have been a little gay. Do you think we had a? Do you think we've had a gay president? I think we've definitely I mean, had a gay president. I feel like yes. I well, so rumor has it that Governor Mimo, um, K. Ivy here in Alabama is a lesbian. Okay. And she had a live-in partner and everything before sure. she, uh, you know, started really running for office. And then she had to, she had it to go. It sucks so hard She's that out. you like, yeah, you're like, well, listen, we're, I'm going to go for bigger things. So you got to go. But vice governor of Alabama. Yeah. Well, oh, but higher if you're going to tear your house apart. Alabama's going to be one of the slowest places to get, to get um, uh, uh, a gay person in office, right? Yeah, even, absolutely. I don't even, we've never even had a New York City mayor who is openly gay. Really? Yeah. It's it's still a long time coming. We're so far behind. We're so far behind. We're for, we're farther behind than than we should be. Like we, yeah. you know, we I like having I like having hopeful conversations, but then I'm like we've never had a gay president. We're not even we're not close. But I do right. like the idea that Obama was the gayest president. I like that. All right. Yeah. I was looking at your I was looking at your content. Um uh, I, I, I don't want to be, I don't want to be an idiot, but, uh, the, the, the double fisting thing, uh, -huh. <laughs> most people, most people's heads are cut off. You are the fister in that video. Yeah. Okay. Um, what's better being, uh, being the fister or being the fisty? I, um, I'm such a switch that I love both. Yeah. You know, I haven't been able to take one to the extent that they took it. Yeah, quite yet. But I mean, I you still were just crushing ass in that. Oh, yeah. They asked for it, too. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think if you guys. So it's on it's on your Twitter, right? That's where I saw it. Yeah. Uh, if yep. you guys want to check it out, I think I think you lose your watch in one of them. Uh, I do. Yeah. I you know, <laughs> Apple, Apple care comes in handy. <laughs> <laughs> You're pinging it. That's the end. It was a weird end of the video. You're like doing the, the find my eye watch is weird. <laughs> um, but no, but just literally wild, just wild. Um, very impressive uh, body of work. How Thank much you. physical toil does it take? To double fist uh, a pair of men. I, um, you know, I think that my my muscular endurance from my elbow down uh, is is up there. Okay. You know? So that wasn't as much an issue as it was. You know, I live coming from Alabama and then moving to LA for a period of time that's really the only chance that I get to explore something like that. Right. And so, um, you know, I had had experiences prior to that, but my biggest concerns were, you know, pleasing them, not hurting them, sure. making sure they're okay. Well, and then times that by two. Right. And I'm making sure that both of these people are okay. I'm not hurting them. Um, you know, figuring out what their signs are for you if they're comfortable, if they're good, if they're enjoying themselves. Um, so, you know, there was a lot going on and it all got caught on camera. Yeah. Um, so it's a, it was an amazing experience. I would absolutely do it again and again. Um, so what was the, I guess, what, what do you call that? What do you call that scene? When the more like the, the more we start sacking more and more things into the thing, is it just a double fisted scene? Is that. I've heard, you know, that wouldn't be double fisting because you're double fisting kind of you're you're the double fister i nobody's getting double fisted no not one person i've heard it it's some variation of chariot i chariot. can't remember the word yeah because i love that <laughs> wait 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 do the do, do the motion again it's just you're just going at it <laughs> like you're holding race. reins yeah yeah Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Well, once you're in, so so once you're in, yeah. Are you once you're in, or is, is um past the elbow? I mean, the part I didn't watch. I didn't watch the whole. I was like, I get what's going on here. But yeah. So I did. So I didn't watch the whole thing. Plus, I think I was also a preview <laughs> on Twitter. But so the, the 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 most of the function is just the the in and out. We're just or or once or once you got in, were you trying to go elbow deep? What's the what's the real? No. So. Since you're dealing with that second hole, uh, some guys like depth. Some guys only really want to go about, you know, wrist deep. Yeah. Um, I've been, I mean, up to my bicep in a guy before. Have you? I have. Yeah, that I, was fun. I think I think one of one of my favorite things that um, 
uh, uh, me and me and like my first girlfriend I ever said to each other is we were we were talking about fisting and we were talking about going elbow deep. Yeah. And I love that you went you went bicep deep on a person. Oh yeah. That feels that's hot as hell too. Yeah. Yeah. So they were more into the uh, you know up to the wrist. I'm sure they've gone farther, but you know a lot of guys don't care for the depth stuff. Yeah. Well, the hardest part is is the is the is the is the, the initial penetration. And yeah. The release right. That's the, I think so. Yeah. And then you, I mean, it's, a uh, the whole area going in. Did you call it second very, hole? Is that where, don't we're calling it second hole? Yeah. <laughs> and you got to deal with that with Dick too. Yeah. Can I say that? <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay, cool. This is a podcast that, that centers Sticky. around sex positivity and porn. We're talking about fisting two men. I think we can say Dick. I think we're. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sweet. So. Um, you have to deal with that when you're bottoming too. I mean, it's, yeah. it's nothing new with that. I mean, you get guys who, you know, are just the, the right length to just punch it. And it's not an, a quite, it's not a great experience yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. just, you know, physically you're not compatible. I know like, you know, from what I've heard women, um, some guys will be too big for women you, just because you, it's, it's just not, it can't, you, you know, could take you, it. You can bottom out. Yeah. Yeah. But basically, um, you know, it needs to be short enough to not punch it or long enough to go through it and make it relax. I see. Yeah. I so, see. uh, wait, how did, how do we get there from fisting? fisting? <laughs> I don't know. Just the, just the, what's the hardest part of it? Cause this, the starting point is a fist. Yeah. So once you start, you know, introducing girth back there, the hole is definitely the you first are about this discussion. Do you, I? Could like, you, you could be like, you could be like, a, like a, like an, like an anal professor. The way, <laughs> the way you're, you're very, you're very delicately. Once you introduce girth into the equation, <laughs> I appreciate this very much. Well, so it's all muscle up in there. And yeah. so, you know, you have to stretch all the muscle or it's going to not be a very pleasant experience. Interesting. Um, so yeah, you got to stretch everything out. Yeah. I never thought of it in that way. <laughs> I like it. Um, so are there things, I mean, that's an, that's an intense, that's an intense scene for me. I feel like, um, cause I haven't even really seen, I haven't even really seen that straight side. Um, that, that, that approach. Um, are there things that you've been asked to do that you said no to, or are there things that you definitely would say no to? Um, there's a lot that I'm into that I don't show on camera just okay. because I, you know, I feel like I'm in my, in the part of my career where I'm trying to appeal to, you know, the more mainstream things. Um, fisting was really even pushing it for okay. social media meet right. for grant. Right. Um, but you know, off camera or on camera, I don't think I would go any further than fisting at the moment. Okay. Yeah. So that's it. So that's interesting. So uh, would you say that your fans, um, then more narrate the lines that you're trying to, uh, exhibit then cause you're saying mainstream, but like ultimately we're, we're deciding, you know, we decide based on who's, who's watching and what they're into. Right. Yeah. And then, and what that line is. So do you think that you're, you, you draw that line because of what, um, yeah, because of what your fans are, are, are into and what they're looking for? Um, I think as creators, we definitely, you know, dictate the types of fans that we have. And so if we're putting, I mean, you have to put content out there before people come sure. to you anyway. Sure. Sure. So sure. if I'm putting out more vanilla stuff, but focusing more on, you know, my ass or, you know, um, more stuff that has to do with my dick, uh, depending on what I put out there is what I start getting more of a response to. And then you just create content that's focused on that. Got it. So wait, I so, could have, so like on uh, only fans, like what is your, what's your like garden variety, like, like, like best, um, best post, like the one that you can replicate and you know that it's going to do well. Doggy does really well uh, with me bottoming. Um, doggy does really well. And then reverse cowgirl where you can, um, cowboy, cowboy, <laughs> where you, uh, where I'm leaning Re back. Reverse cow non-gendered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, yeah. So, 
Uh, and I lean back and you can actually see everything going on. Um, yeah. it's just pointed right at the camera that goes yeah. over really well. Yeah. Um, they love, uh, people generally love that position. Um, I mean, just a, any chance that I can get where I'm bottoming and it's just really showing off my ass and everything happening, you know, in between, um, that's your bread and butter. People love that. Yep. Yeah. Size difference goes over really well too. Um, are you tiny? I'm, a, I'm about five, six. Okay. And so there are a lot of people in the industry that are, you know, over six foot. Yeah. So five, five six is, is pretty atypical for a man, right? Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say in, you know, this industry, I've met a few people who are really big in the industry who I'm actually taller than, um, okay. and that ended up being a surprise. Yeah. 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 So, you know, I mean, a, a lot of guys, shorter say, guys can pack, no, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Shorter guys can pack on more muscle more easily. Right. And then, you know, dick size doesn't really have any, anything to do with height. And so sure. if a short sure. guy has a big old dick and can put on a lot of muscle um, on camera, you can make him look like he's six foot better. Right. I guess yeah. that makes sense. Right. Cause right. Cause on the other side, it's like um, girl side. It's like, it's all about trying to find like these four eleven, four ten, four nine mm -hmm. girls. So that again, it just looks like they're getting like dominated. Absolutely. By these men and you know, who are not, they're not six, eight, but they may as well be as uh, with the size difference. They could very but, well be my height. Yeah, so I like that. I do like that. Um, I do like that notion that, um, that yeah, the, the, if if you're short and you're stacked and you and you can put on muscle, on camera, that's that's the best formula. Yeah, and I mean you. It's not a trend that I think like the average viewer would be able to tell, but like you will never see certain tops in the same scenes with certain other tops yeah just because it's you know this guy is actually six something and this guy is not so much so you're saying from like a brand perspective or or the or like the the size difference is is like um alarming like what what's the why wouldn't you see them together it's more from a brand thing so because like if, if you're if marketing think someone I'm who's like a big sexy man with a huge cock but i'm really five seven and then yeah. the other one of me is actually six one mm -hmm. you don't ever want us we don't ever want to shoot together because we don't want to kill the illusion yeah i mean it breaks the fantasy and we're selling yeah. a fantasy yeah all right so you i mean you you very are you have you are young but you also have a you have a young ish look do you think that how how long <laughs> do you think that this um boyish charm look will hold on um, and, and do you think if, I don't know, like, I don't, I don't know what the other thing would be like. I don't know if you, you do you think if like, like growing like a, like a, like an eight inch beard would like make, um, like money that you would go that route or would you, what do you think? Uh, you know, if that's what people are into, then I guess that's the route I would have to take. People that last a really long time in this industry are ones that adapt to, you know, reasonably what they, how am I, how do I say this? People that last a long time in the industry are people that um, adapt well to their age. Sure. As it's That's appropriate. a good way to say it. Yeah. So my, so my age, and I was saying this, I don't even think it made it on an episode, but I was saying this to somebody uh, recently was my age, and I don't know about uh, boy boy side, but on boy girl side, most of the people that were my age that were women um, left. They just sort of like vanished um, in the last like five years. And then now at the tail end of that period, it's like the people that hung around have fantastic careers because I'm not less attracted to the person who I thought was hot at 28. I was 28, they were 28, now we're 40. And that's right. still who I want to jerk off to. So mm -hmm. we've reached this because there was a period of time where everything was mainstream and they were pushing people out, especially women. They were like, oh, you're all get out of here. Um, so we're that's finally crazy. getting up to this part where, I mean, you you justifiably, if you wanted to, could easily, as a hot person, stay in this industry into your 60s. And I think that there's a market for that. And it really is. Yeah. It's like because you're, you're these people are going to grow with you. So the new people that you get that are 20 every year 
it doesn't have anything to do with the people that have been with you. Your, your rider dies, as they say. Yeah. Um, who will hang Absolutely. with you? And there's so many people uh, who like left the industry who I want to jerk off to. Like, where are you? Come back. I want, you know? And so we're at this, yeah. we're, we're at this weird juncture where, where there, there's like almost no, that we had this discussion the other day. Do you think that there is an age is too old for porn? Do you think that there is somebody um, specific by, by age that like, you'd be like, all right, you're 75. It's time to go. Like, do you think there's an age? I think there's a market for everything. I think it's just, it's case by case. Um, you know, if you start, if you turn 35 and you're still trying to, uh, appeal to the twink market and you can't show any ability to adapt to like a more mature market. Yeah. You're, you're done. Well, so what, what's so what's the thing after twink? So if twink, if twink is like young and prepubescent and, and like barely legal, what's the next? Just I would young say hot boy? really more just like the jock hunk yeah. type, the archetype really. And then, um, and then after that, Oh, daddy. Daddy. Yeah. And then, and then it's just daddy forever or it's daddy and then, then it's granddaddy. Is there a granddaddy? I, I think that that category is on Pornhub. Okay. Do you have, <laughs> is, is, do you got, is, is DILF a thing that, that, that gay men use as a, um, cause we love that straight men love this MILF thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. DILF, DILF is, is thrown around just as much. Yeah, absolutely. I see. I mean, I'm not, there are some guys that are my age that I'm attracted to. Um, I would say 90% of the men that I'm attracted to are at least 10 to 20 years older than me. Yeah. And so who's, it's, and there's who's a buying your market. content? Who's buying my content? Yeah. Is it those men? Or it's men oh, your I age? don't, you know, that's not a statistic I have access to, but I would say the over 30 crowd. Okay. Yeah. I can't, I, I feel like my two sides of porn, right? So yeah. the one side is I want to be in there. And then the other side is uh, I want to fuck the person. So you, so like you, it's like you have, and then there's also the voyeuristic part where like, I just want to watch these two go at it. Yeah. Um, so you have all of those, those markets going for you. Um, because, you know, on, on boy, boy side, the generally speaking, the people that are watching your porn are, are, are liable to be attracted to everybody in the scene sexually. Right. And yeah, so, absolutely. And so that, so there's I mean, like you don't all want to the see someone that you really like. Go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Well, you don't want to see someone that you really like messing around with someone that you just don't want to jerk off to maybe, but no, but so then that's where it comes. That's where it's interesting. Right. So like, I'm a, you know, I'm a straight boy. So I, I watch straight porn. So like, I'm not, I don't, what we have to do is we have to like, we have to like remove who's fucking the person we want to watch get fucked. Yeah. Like, so there's like this weird emotional removal. So either you're like, and you can go from either perspective because I'm a dude. So I'm like, I can jerk off in any circumstances. So I yeah. either got to come from the perspective that like, um, he shouldn't be allowed to fuck the person that I'm watching want to get fucked. And it's like, now it's like punishment to everybody. Right. Or it's that like, uh -huh. I want to be him or that like, but there's no, there's no thing where I, so I shut off being attracted to that whole half of porn. So uh -huh. I think that there's, there's easily people that, that can watch boy boy porn and then and then just half of it is like that doesn't matter to me because i'm here for yeah. this side of the, this i'm here for this side of the show that's a good point yeah i don't think that it, that it affects but maybe i mean you you went i think it's a much sweeter deal um being uh being uh, a homosexual and watching porn where everybody is somebody who you'd want to fuck in the scene i think that's yeah that's a much better arrangement that's why guys love this this uh this the girl girl stuff um because it's the first time we get that experience where we get just to see two people that we actually want to fuck and there's nobody like intervening. Yeah. And I think there's harsher criteria for gay porn stars, um, is at least men, um, than the straight guys that do straight porn. Um, you mean they have I, to be, you saying they have to be hotter? Oh yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So, I mean, there is a good chance that, everyone in every scene that you see that's gay porn um 
you'll be attracted to them yeah. versus, you know, I've seen some straight porn stars with some busted faces, but they've got a names. good body and a big old <laughs> dick. So name it names. doesn't yeah, matter. No, we, yeah. We really don't care what the, uh, we really don't care what the face is on the guy. Yeah. Um, and then it also, that also speaks to, that speaks to two things that speaks to one, um, dudes kind of being more superficial than women because women, you know, um, and not that, and not that straight porn is really targeted at women, but women can see past an ugly dude. But dudes can't really see past ugly people. We're like the we're the worst. Dudes are the worst thing out there. So we want. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've been the most critical of people's appearance for yes. so long that we've projected it onto women to the point where they're you know, it's. You clean up my raw language. I like you for that. I just say, I just say something flagrant, and you're like, "Yes, no, no, no." We have been critical in history. <laughs> well, it's a good balance. My idiocy and your and your intelligence. I like. Well, it. thanks. <laughs> okay, so um, so where are you right now? What is this? Where what is this place? I'm in uh, I'm in Birmingham right now. So I am roommates with some good friends of mine. Um, we're in a really good place right now and actually just moved in here. Um, go ahead. And this is where you, this is where you live now. Yes. Yeah. So I'm in Birmingham. Um, really the thing was I wasn't working in LA. Yeah. So porn studios, or at least the ones that I, I was really strict whenever I went into the industry about what studios I wanted to work with. Um, so that was absolutely Falcon top of my list. They're one of the oldest studios that exist. Uh, still, they survived AIDS. Um, it's, you know, I'm actually to work with them means a lot more to me than most people who have worked with them just because of the history behind them. I'm, I'm proud of what I put out when I work with them. Yeah. Um, it's such high quality stuff and it, there's so much history behind it as well. Um, so Falcon doesn't shoot in LA. So no. I was, you know, I was being paid to travel to Palm Springs and Vegas and okay. um, New York and it just, yeah. and Spain will be next year or two. Oh, shit. Um, it just doesn't make sense for me to live in LA and pay LA prices when I can, you know, live a lot cheaper here, Yeah, travel from here and be with my friends and family. Well, and that's what it seems like everybody's sort of doing, especially since a good portion of content now is self-made. So it doesn't matter where you are. Right. Um, yeah. And then that was actually the draw to Vegas for a while. Cause Vegas was cheap for a while. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden Vegas isn't as cheap anymore. So then right. now it's just like, there's like a new Vegas, it's just like wherever people go, um, it ends up being where they're because now you're not break, you're not really breaking. I don't actually don't know. I'm going to say something that uh, completely out of turn, but you're not breaking any laws to like uh, film yourself in your house. I don't think not um, anymore here. No, we had um, it was around the time where gay marriage was being legalized. I want to say it was like 2014 Alabama up until that point, Alabama had an anti sodomy law. I see. And I think it was the U.S. Supreme Court that struck it down. Um, so it used to be illegal here, but now it's not. Yeah. Well, but, so what was the law that was making it so that we couldn't make porn, that we couldn't film sex? Oh, um, it wasn't anti-sodomy. So... Because sex work, generally speaking, is, is a big no-no in our country. Federally, it's a no-no. That's I remember idea. that we had a... Trenton told me a lot about this because he had a lot to do with it. Um, there was a law, it had to do with OSHA, um, where they did want to like put a ton of restrictions on studio porn. Right. So amateur porn at that point wasn't really that big of a deal. I mean, there yeah. was Pornhub and all of that. They can't regulate that. Sure. Because no one's getting paid in that scenario. Right. So you know, OSHA tried to step in. This was a few years back before I was in the industry. This was like and, the, the condom scare thing for a while. Right. Yeah. And we really only stopped using condoms pretty recently, I want to say. So it's, I don't know. I guess, did anybody ever call it condom gate? It was like um, the, the, the idea that, that, that all porn had to be uh, 
So it, and it hit the news hit, but I ne- it never really made its way into 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 my straight porn. Um, yeah. Even though supposedly it, it was at one point, California was like an all condom um, mm-hmm. state for yeah. porn. Absolutely. Um, I mean, I, I want to say this law went as far as requiring everything. I mean, it was like dental dams, um, condoms. Um, it was very overreaching. I want to yeah. say like even crew on set had to wear some sort of um, PPE. I love that. This is so, this is such a funny idea. It's, that, especially since like way pre COVID. So like, they're like, you have to wear like a, like a, like a, like a dental face guard. Yeah. And like a hazmat to yep. hold camera. I think that's hilarious. Or the, yep. they're literally like, they're like the, everybody, every crew has to be wearing a condom just in case. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Nobody's fucking anybody. No, no, no. Please put a condom on, please, sir. But now like, you know, if, if there's some fluid where it shouldn't be, I'll yeah. have a crew crew member with just a paper towel fixing it real quick. Or I have, you know, the funniest explanation or the, where is it? Wait, where is come not supposed to be just because now I'm racking my brain. Oh, it's not when the cum shows up. It's just when there's too much lube or okay. it's like dripping. Yeah, they clean that up for me. I love I love a, a luby scene. Oh yeah, me too. How much they don't. Lube? <laughs> Who doesn't like luby scenes? I I love it. Who doesn't like luby scenes? You Who? said they don't. You said they don't. Um, it, the crew. Okay, I see. Yeah, I see. They see crew, something I don't. Crew doesn't well, want to get don't hit see it with if it's down there, but yeah. But I'll have at one point, you know, someone laying on their back between my legs with a camera and then someone else with a light. And then, you know, the top is behind me. I mean, it's it's very invasive. I've had more than one camera like in between every it's it's a lot. Yeah, (laughs) but it's so much fun. I love making uh, making studio porn and content and everything. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Sexy People Podcast. This is part one. Part two will come back next week. Uh, You can pick up with our chat there. Thank you so much for listening. 